In Native American Indian culture, the circle is one of the most important symbols. It represents the seasons, the cycle of life, the ancient ones, the powwow. It speaks of and represents tradition, history, culture, heritage. That passing down of information from one generation to another, that sacred wisdom and legacy. For the indigenous people of South Carolina, the circle was almost broken. Today, the Native American Indians of South Carolina are busy mending that circle. Who were the first people of South Carolina? We know the American Indians of South Carolina in the woodland period. In that historical period, they began settling in villages located next to rivers and began planting gardens of squash, cords, corn, beans, and tobacco. They began making pottery out of river clays and hunted with bows and arrows. The first earthen mounds were built about 1500 BC. They are characteristic of this historical era. During the 1200s, a new cultural tradition arrived in the Carolina Piedmont as natives practiced extensive agriculture and trade with other tribes. Trade for shells, copper at this time and period was referred to as the Mississippian period. It was during this period that their complex societies built earthen mounds and ceremonial centers, some with palisade stockade fences. Their leaders exchanged in complex political and spiritual systems. In these cultures, a specialized religion and spiritual system was developed and the relationship between the people and the land was expanded. This special relationship continues today with many of the Native American Indians. This is the sacred land as it was when the Europeans first arrived and called it Carolina. It was a land of dense pine forests that stretched from the Atlantic to the Midlands. In the Midlands, the flatness became rolling hills. The rolling hills became steeper with hard woods and many rivers that flowed from the Piedmont and finally into the mountains of the Blue Ridge. This was the sacred and ancient land of the Cherokee, the Catawba, the Creek, the Edisto, the Natchez, the PD, the Saluda, the Santee, the Wakama, and the Yamasee, and many other tribes that call this land their home. Historically, the names of many of the South Carolina rivers are derived from the names of these Indian tribes. Some of those rivers are the Santee River, the Edisto, the PD River, the Congaree, the Wakama, the Catawba, and others. In the northeast and central parts of the state were the villages of the Siwi, the Winya, the Santee, the Wakama, the Pedi, the Chiraw, the Congaree, the Watery, the Waxaw, the Sugary, and the Catawba. Along the Savannah River, at different periods, were found the Appalachie, the Yuchi, the Yamasee, the Westo, the Shawnee, and the Chickasaw. All of these groups were portions of larger tribes from surrounding states. In the hills of the northwest part of the state of South Carolina were the lower tribes of the Cherokee. In ancient times, the first people of South Carolina crafted pottery, pipes, flint points, farming and hunting tools, shell ornaments and beads. Soon they began to use detailed symbology to adorn their objects. In the area comprising the present state of South Carolina, there were over 20 different groups of tribes of native people, each with its own language, culture, and history. The many languages can be characterized in language family groups. The Suan language family was in this state 
as well as the Iroquoian and the Muscogean language groups. American Indians have been defined, labeled, categorized, and redefined since the time of the earliest contacts with non-Indians. In the past, the names given Indian individuals and entire tribes often had no relation to their own descriptive name for themselves, and rarely did the recorder go to the source to obtain their direct input. Indian slavery is an important part of South Carolina history that most know nothing about. The enslaved Indians were numerous in the state, and the number of Indians exported as slaves was larger than that of any other colony. It was slavery more than war and disease, which destroyed the small coastal tribes. Who are the South Carolina Indians today? In ancient times and today, a tribe was a society of people bound by family relations and a common language. They also had their own religion and political systems, social systems, culture, customs, folkways, and history. Many tribal groups combined, and some new tribal groups began to form, consequently resulting in multicultural heritage of contemporary Native American Indian groups and tribes here in South Carolina. This is certainly the experience of such groups as South Carolina's Barnertown Indians, the Somerville Indians, and the Natchez Cuso Indians. These groups have multicultural ancestry, heritage, and culture. In recent years, South Carolina residents with Native American backgrounds have embraced their heritage. They organize powwows and other events to spotlight their customs, heritage, and traditions. The Jean Lanny Harris Folk Heritage Awards were created by South Carolina's legislature in 1986 to recognize lifetime achievement in this state for traditional folk art. Five Native Americans have been honored by the state of South Carolina for their important talents and the legacy that they have given to the future generations of South Carolinians. Among those, Sarah Ayers, George Harris, Nola Campbell, Evelyn George, Nancy Basket. Pull together and start uh, making heritage a big focal point. Listen to it. So it's, uh, I guess we're a fight for uh, a, a race right now is the way we look at it. Um, there's a lot of the heritage that can die out so quickly and if we don't uh, preserve it right now, we have quite a few of the potters that are superb and their life is just a, a living, breathing book of heritage and um, the age that some of them have on them, you know, we're not promised they'll even be here tomorrow, so we're trying to take down stories they tell us, trying to get them on videotape. Also, the Catawba Cultural Preservation Project received the 1993 Folk Heritage Award for its advocacy. They were the first award given in this category. The first Native American Indian woman to be honored by the state of South Carolina as a woman of achievement happened in 2001. Miss Felicia L. Goins, DDS, is the first Native American Indian woman to ever be honored by the governor and the state of South Carolina in history. I've been practicing in Sumter for about 18 years now, and um, I have been in Columbia just about three years, and I just enjoyed working with the kids. The Dental Health Reach Program was probably uh, thought of in an, in an idea because we saw such a need here in Sumter, and um, we just couldn't service them all. So we were trying to think of a program where we could get some of the local dentists to volunteer their time. And we were trying to um, get the kids whose parents couldn't afford the dental work. It really has evolved into an absolutely great program. With the annual Woman of Achievement Awards, the commission together with the governor,